Well, hey, and welcome back to class number three, uh, membership class. And you realize that a lot of these videos are, are relatively short because usually there's a lot of discussion and um, I expect that you'll have lots of questions for me. And so we are gonna have some time after this red phase and when we get back into orange and yellow that we will have a time to get together to discuss some of these. So in the meantime, build up those questions, write them down, or you can even send them to me now and uh, I can give you a call or I'll respond in the email any questions that you may have. Because I'm sure um, you have many, many questions. Now, if you were raised in the Baptist Church in particular, uh, Canadian Baptist of Atlantic Canada or Convention Baptist such as us, uh, th this, this is known stuff. This is kind of review here. So there's nothing out of the ordinary, really, nothing surprising that you're, that you're hearing. But you still may have some questions in particular about this uh, church here. And so we're going to answer some of those questions about us, New Hope Community Church. Thus far, it's been pretty generalized, uh, taking a look at our history, taking a look at the Baptist distinctives. But um, let's take a look at New Hope just for a few minutes here. So New Hope, we are approaching our sixth uh, anniversary as New Hope Community Church. So it's a relatively young church. However, our roots are deep. Uh, you probably know the story, but if you don't, here's the story. That in 2015, uh, two churches came together. And that was Steve's Mountain Baptist Church and Barry Mills Baptist Church. And formed New Hope in the year 2015. But the history of these two churches that came together go uh, way back to 1850, uh, Christians in this corner of Westmoreland County uh, worshiped together in homes and from time to time traveled to Salisbury to attend services of divine worship. Now, as you know, uh, Salisbury is not that far away, but in 1850, it would have been quite a hike or carriage ride, horseback ride to Salisbury. So it wasn't real practical. You may also know that throughout the Atlantic provinces and throughout, of course, uh, North America and beyond, um, churches needed to be in the smaller areas. And so if you take any drive in the Maritimes, you will pass multiple Baptist churches. And the reason was that we didn't want a Baptist church any further away than a, a horse and buggy ride uh, to get to. Therefore, we've got Baptist churches dotted all over the area, and this area is no different. So you would have had Barry Mills, which today is probably three minutes drive from Steve's Mountain, but back then it would have been a significant hike. So it made sense to have these churches in different areas. But today, uh, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have multiple churches in the area, and in particular, small churches where they could come together and share resources and have one pastor. And uh, so that, that's, that it just kind of made sense in 2015 that this would happen. Two struggling churches came together to make one strong church. So the first church in area was the Steve's Mountain uh, Baptist Church, and the building was built in 1858 to serve three denominations. Isn't that cool? Three denominations came together, the Methodists, the regular Baptists, and the free Baptists. Now, th this were a very different uh, bunch. Of course, we all believed in the same God. We pretty much believed all the same thing, but there were significant differences. Therefore, there were three different separate denom denominations. The two Baptist denominations continued to grow until the United in January 17, 1906, to become the Steve's Mountain United Baptist Church, with a membership of 170. In 1922, 43 Baptists in the area organized Barry Mills United Baptist Church, and these came from Salisbury, Mount Eagle, and a large number from Steve's Mountain, including the entire board of deacons. So you can see that we had a shared, uh, shared history there as well. It was in 2014 that merger talks began between the two churches and recognized that together they could accomplish more for the kingdom. The renewed vision of reaching the community with the gospel included a commitment to build a new facility which become both accessible to seniors and attractive to families. The merger was accomplished on March the 11th, 2015, after which the new con congregation was named New Hope Community Church. Now, what I'm reading to you now, of course, is re our, 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 our present condition here. Since 2015, New Hope Community Church has aggressively pursued a vision to build this building which I'm sitting in right now. 
praying and plant, planning and fundraising, God has not only honored our prayers, he has increased our faith. In June of 2020, we opened the New Hope Community uh, uh, and Ministry Center. So our very first service in this building was June 28th, 2020. And since that time, we have seen a few hundred people come through our doors, many of whom have stayed. And we have grown significantly over this time, and you who are watching this today have been part of that growth. Every week, we have seen new faces come into this building. Now, I'm just going to pause to say this, that people have asked me, you know, how have we grown, or how significant is the growth? And really, it's very, very hard to count, because as you know, since we've opened on June 28, 2020, some of our most regular people have not come to church simply because of this pandemic. Other people who have come uh, were from other churches whose other churches haven't, their own churches haven't opened yet. So it's been very, very difficult to kind of figure out, okay, who's, who's here, who's, who's not. But clearly we have seen an increase of numbers. We've seen an increase in giving. We've seen an increase in participation. And I can't wait to see what happens when we get uh, back to normal, get back to the green phase where uh, we are able to gather un unencumbered by, by the restrictions of the pandemic. I do believe that we have, uh, we have a, a very firm foundation on which to build on when we get out of this pandemic. We have seen new faces. We have strong, uh, new, committed people here. Some of the biggest question marks, some of the biggest prayers we prayed was, Lord, when this new ministry center opens up, give us the ingredients that we need. Give us the people that we need to do the ministries that we need to do. One of the biggest concerns we had was, was worship. We wanted to, uh, as part of this new building and then the fresh expressions of, of our ministry, we wanted a strong worship team, modern worship that could lead us in, in a mix of songs that would bring renewed uh, passion to older songs and fresh new ones as well. Well, as you know, we, we have been overly blessed by uh, uh, talented people that have come into our band and uh, singers to put together a, a top-notch worship experience. Uh, we're all growing together as a band, and we have seen the evolution of this band uh, since June 28th, actually before that, be we, we started meeting as a band before we opened here. And it's just been a wonderful blessing and answer to prayer to see uh, that this, this happen. We have seen a growth in our children's ministry. And again, we pray, God, uh, give us a curriculum, give us workers, give us volunteers that we can staff this ministry. And God has blessed us there too. We wanted a, a first impression team. And so what you see when we went through the door for the very first time, the big signs welcoming you here, great big smiles under the mask. Uh, we wanted that experience to be second to none. We also wanted this experience to be holistic from the parking lot to the pew uh, seat to, to back to the parking lot here that not only do people experience a great worship service, but they really understand that we are here for you and that this is your home, and we want you to be part of this experience. And so we really hope that when people come through the doors of our church, they know our hearts, they feel our hearts, they know how we, how excited we are that, that you are here. So there has been a lot of prayer. There's been a lot of sacrifice. There's been a lot of giving uh, to, to get to the place where we are today. And for those who have been on this journey since the beginning or uh, well before the beginning of 2015 when the merger happened, to see all this happen has been nothing but just watching a miracle unfold before our eyes. God has blessed us tremendously. And what is so cool to see at this point in the history of New Hope Community Church is that uh, the folks that were here before and the folks that are here now, and the new folks that are here now, we're all one. There's not the old and the new, it's us. And it's exciting to see that uh, the, the open arms of the people who have been here forever to, the, to receive new people. And we are so excited to see this new growth. 
And that's why it's so important to us that you feel comfortable enough to take those steps necessary to become a member because this is your church too. One of the things we prayed over and over and over as we were making decisions and we put our faith on the line to, to make major and dramatic decisions was we are making decisions now for people what we haven't met yet. We are making decisions now for people that will attend the church that we don't know. Their God is, is drawing people to this church that uh, we have not met yet, that we'll be surprised when they come in here. And one of the things that we wanted uh, uh, the people here to know, and we want you to know, is that we shouldn't be surprised when people come through the doors because we have prayed for this, we're expecting this, and we are expecting the community to walk into our church and they feel part of this. This is your church. And so we are so excited, and I am so proud of our people and our membership here that they we have this attitude that this is for others. We are here for others. We're here to serve others. Uh, what we do, what we give to, this is God's church, and it's not just for us. It's for the world. It's for the community. I am so excited to see what's going to happen here at New Hope Community Church, and we're going to get to that in our last session. But today, that's just the introduction for, uh, we're going to be doing some paperwork today. So I'm sending you, uh, here on Facebook, you, you've got it in the, the link there as well, but uh, uh, there's some documents that we're going to go through. I'm not going to go through all of it. I just want to do some highlights. But what we're going to be taking a look at is the church constitution, the bylaws, the covenant, and those three things we're going to be taking a look at today. And basically what we're going to be taking a look today is, is the structure of who we are and how we run things around here. Basically, to, to oversimplify things here, the Baptist Church is a congregational model church in that the members run the church. Of course, as we already talked about with the distinctives there, Christ is the, the leader of this church, the Word of God, the Bible is, is what we uh, formulate. Everything that we do has to line up and agree with Scripture. And so with that, the, the members make those decisions. Me, as pastor, I am hired by you, uh, the, the members, and I work for you. And you have the right uh, and, and, and the privilege to, to question me, to, to, uh, I'm, I'm to be accountable to you. If, if I step out of line, if I, if I preach something that doesn't line up with the Word of God, uh, you are to challenge me on that. And, and, and uh, you can take a vote on, on the pastoral leadership as well, whether that I'm to continue or whether to give me a, a new call at any time. And so it really is a congregationally led uh, church. Every decision, every major decision is uh, uh, by the membership of the church. And the members elect a leadership team. So the, the members uh, uh, call a pastor, but they also elect a leadership team. And I work uh, with the leadership team to help run uh, the church. Now, many of the major decisions, we need to go back to the uh, members. And we have uh, two uh, biannual meetings a year of membership. But if you've been here for a few weeks and you see how we operate, you'll notice that oftentimes we will call a special members meeting if we have something to discuss. So the last one here would have been uh, we need to expand the parking lot. Well, we as a leadership team, and certainly me as a pastor, we can't make that decision without going to the membership to ask permission to spend that much money or borrow that much money, or in our case, raise that much money. So we came to you, the members. The members voted on that. It was approved, and then we went forward with there. So, in other words, the, the decisions that we make here at the church are local decisions made by uh, the membership of this church. We don't have someone outside of our church or above our church and the organization of the Canadian Baptists of Atlantic Canada that can dictate how we run this church. We uh, look to them for guidance. We can look for uh, funding from them. We can ask them to come in to speak to us and guide us, but they cannot come in here and say, you need to do this. So it's, it's, a, it's a codependency between our leadership outside the church and the local governance of the 
uh, local church. And it's a wonderful system. It really is a wonderful system by which we are responsible for the life of this church and the running of this church, always making sure that we align with God's will known through his scriptures. So that's just a bare bones idea of what uh, we are as uh, a structure of this church. Now we have a leadership board, we have a children's ed uh, uh, Christian education board, we have a facilities board, uh, we have, uh, what are the boards? We have missions, CE, um, anyway, it's in, it's in the, the Constitution, it outlines some of the boards that we do have here. And so the Articles of Constitution, which again, uh, you would have uh, either email to you or it's in the comments below in this video here. Articles of the Constitution, the Article 1 is just kind of defining what we believe the church is. Moving on, Article 2 is our vision and statement and mission for the church. So our vision here is introducing Jesus Christ to every home in the community and world. So very basic uh, understanding of what we do as a church. We've just defined it quite simply. Our mission statement is the gospel of Jesus Christ impacting the community and the world one project at a, a time. And then Article 3 is our statement of faith. So we, what is the Bible? Who is God? Who is Jesus? Uh, uh, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is man? What is salvation? If I accept Jesus Christ, is my salvation forever? Do we grow as believers? Why is evil present in the world? And under each one of those statements of faith is scripture to back those up. How will I spend eternity? What is the church? What is the second coming of Jesus Christ? Marriage, sanctity of life, and the ordinances. And so, oh, it continues on the next page. Baptism, the Lord's Supper. That's Article 3. Article 4 outlines what it is to be a member and how someone can become a member. Article 5 are the aims and functions of the church. So things like we gather to regularly worship, pray, pray, teach, encouragement, and fellowship. So pretty routine. And a lot of these things that we have here in our Constitution, you would find in every single church, whether it's a Baptist or not. Uh, and then the next Article 6 is our affiliation. So we are New Hope Community Church. Uh, we are in an association called the Westmoreland Kent Association of Atlantic Baptist Churches. Uh, this thing needs to be changed. It says that we're part of the Convention of Atlantic Baptist Churches. Well, that was switched in 2016 to the Canadian Baptists of Atlantic Canada. And to change the Constitution, we need to take it to the membership. Um, so we would need to announce a meeting two weeks before. We would need to give notice of a change to the Constitution, and then we would need a two-thirds vote to change the Constitution. So that's affiliation. Article 6 is the covenant. Now, we are a covenant people. The Baptists are known uh, for, we don't have a book of policy, and this is who we are, and we don't have creeds necessarily, uh, although we do uh, say, and we do believe in the Neocene Creed, the uh, Apostles' Creed, but um, we, we are what you would call a covenant church. In other words, we as members of the church, we covenant together to behave and to act in a certain way. And this covenant is something that you would agree to if you want to become a member. And it's also something that once a year, usually on our anniversary Sunday, which for us is coming up on March, March uh, 2021, it would be our six years, New Hope Community Church, uh, we, we would read this together. And so I'm going to uh, read it to you, uh, mostly. Now this covenant has a uh, point, and then it has some subpoints, and then it has scripture to back up those points. I'm not going to read the scripture uh, for you because that would take some time. So here's the covenant. Number one, I will protect the unity of my church by acting in love towards other members, by refusing to gossip, by working in harmony, with the spiritual leaders. So that's pretty cool, right? That, that, that's covenant again. We have decided that I will protect the unity of my church by doing this, this, and this. Number two, I will share the responsibility of my church by praying for its growth and spiritual well-being, by contacting and inviting the unchurched to attend, and by warmly welcoming those who visit. And again, it's just in an agreement. 
for what uh, we stand for and how we want to behave. So you can see why it's a good idea that at least once a year we should remind ourselves this is what we do. This is who we are. Number three, I will serve the ministry of my church by using my gifts and abilities to serve others, by developing a servant's heart. And number four, and lastly, the last part of the covenant, I will support the testimony of my church by maintaining a daily quiet time with the Lord, by attending faithfully the service which are meant for me, by living a consistent godly lifestyle, by giving regular financial contributions to the ministry of the church. It's a wonderful covenant. It's a wonderful idea that, you know, we've decided this is how we're going to treat each other. This is how we're going to treat people who come into our fellowship here. And this is how I'm going to uh, maintain the personal witness for myself. That's Article 7. Article 8 of the Constitution. Amendments to the Articles of Constitution, which just basically explains if we need to make changes, and we do, and we will. This is a living document because as we grow as a church, uh, there's things that we're going to have to change. We're going to have to change the structure of our church. Right now we have one board of leadership. At some point we may have to have a management board and a leadership board and a vision board. Uh, there's, there's things that will never really have to change over time. So things that are set here, uh, we need to understand that this is a, a living, living document. So that's the Constitution, and I will ask that you uh, take that, read through that, understand that, and that uh, when it comes time for you to uh, request membership, that uh, you uh, have read that, understood that, and you're willing to commit to the, to the covenant here. The next document I have is the bylaws, and I am not going to uh, read all of this to you, but it is something that you need to be aware of. Sometimes we're in a church meeting and uh, a, 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 a process or a procedure will happen or we take a vote and you're thinking, well, why in the world did you do it that way or why can't we do it this way? Well, th this document, the bylaws, kind of helps us understand uh, what it's all about. You don't have to uh, uh, memorize this. I don't have it memorized. And oftentimes uh, there, there's someone uh, in, in the membership meeting that knows it better than I do. And I'll say, does anybody remember what, or can someone point to me in the bylaws what we need to do here? So this document here just kind of helping us uh, 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 lead the church, put structure to some of the decisions that we need to make in different things. So again, this is divided into articles. Article one is organization. And it just, uh, again, helps us to uh, figure out this is why we have this document and this is what it's going to help us do. Article 2 is is membership. Now in this membership, basically it's saying if you want to become a member, you need to go through this class. You need to be baptized. You request membership and the membership approves you for membership. Now, uh, let's just stop right here because maybe you've gotten this far. So you've watched uh, uh, video 1, you've watched video 2, and maybe I should have explained this a little bit earlier here, but if you are now a part of a Baptist church, you've already got membership at another Baptist church and you want membership in our church, you don't have to go through the process of going to the class. You would already be baptized. Uh, we do recommend that you do watch this video or come to a class so you understand who we are because a lot of there's a lot of differences between Baptist churches and how they are run, in particular if they're different sizes. Uh, but all you need to do, and you can do this right now, in fact, you can press pause after I say this and do it. You don't have to watch anymore. It's this. If you are now part of a Baptist church or something close to a Baptist church, i.e. a Salvation Army or Nazarene or a, uh, another variation of a Baptist church, Wesleyan church, what have you, uh, you can just request transfer, and we uh, write the request. We do this, not you. You just inform me or Sharon Elliott, our clerk. I want to transfer my membership. She starts the process. The process happens. We receive a letter saying that, that yes, they are in uh, a member in good standing, and we transfer them to you. And then we recognize you on a Sunday morning as transferring in from a, from another church. That, that is a process, or you can say, you know what, I, I, I just want to go through the class, do the paperwork, and, and become a member. 
that's Article 2 of the bylaws here. And, of course, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it here. If you're looking at it, it's quite, it's quite a list there. Article 3, officers uh, and committees of the New Hope Community Church. And so you're going to see the different uh, uh, persons that are on the leadership team, their positions, titles, and uh, what they would do there. So, again, pretty helpful if you go into a church meeting and wonder why that person said that and what position they hold. And you also may see that, you know what, I, I, I someday would like to hold that position. You understand uh, the duties outlined there. So, uh, hospitality, the building committee. Uh, building committee is no more because our building is built, but who knows, we may need to activate that again in the future. So it goes on and on, all kinds of different committees, which again is pretty typical of a Baptist church. Article 4, general meeting of the membership. It outlines for us at this point that we have two meetings of the membership per year to do the business of the church where we review six months of the year and then the, the second meeting we usually end a year which we are coming up to right away we need to do the business for 2020 we haven't done that yet usually we would have done it by now but by pand because of the pandemic and other things we just haven't done that yet we're hoping to do that the third week in february and love to have you as a member before we get there or we can take you in membership that day if you're ready. Article 5 is amendments to the bylaws. Again, uh, the process there that it takes to uh, get things done. All right, so documents, all kinds of documents, all kinds of things. So what I would ask you at this point is take a read through. Take a look at the, the Constitution. Take a look at the covenant. Take a look at the bylaws. And again, you don't have to understand them all and you don't have to agree with them all. There's some things here that, you know what, I, I don't agree that, uh, uh, that, that, that there needs to be eight people on the leadership team. Well, that's not something that's set in stone. That's not a, a, a deal breaker when it comes to membership here. So read through them. If you have any questions, write them down or send them to me an email or give me a call, or you can wait again till we get out of this phase so that we can have uh, a, a gathering of people who are interested who have watched these videos so we can have a discussion. That's it for lesson three or class number three. I'll see you next week for the last session, class number four. Thanks.